Hey guys, it's me, Ms. Norris, and today I'd like to share a fun read aloud with you of the story, Ruthie and the Not-So-Teeny-Tiny Lie. The story, Ruthie and the Not-So-Teeny-Tiny Lie, was written in 2007 by Laura Rankin, and it tells the story of Ruthie. If you're ready to hear the story, I'm ready to share it with you. Here we go. I'm going to give you a close-up of Ruthie. She's very, very cute, a cute little fox. Ruthie and the Not-So-Teeny-Tiny Lie. This is Ruthie coming to school. She's very excited to be there. Ruthie loved tiny things. The tinier, the better. Her toys were the teeniest imaginable. She had dinky dinosaurs, itty-bitty trains, ponies no bigger than your pinky, and teddy bears that were barely there. But Ruthie likes teeny tiny toys, teeny tiny farms, teeny tiny houses, teeny tiny horses and bears and dinosaurs. She loves teeny tiny things. Ruthie loved finding tiny treasures too. At the beach, she searched for the smallest seashells. The flowers she picked were no bigger than fairy wings. She even had an eggshell from a hummingbird. And whenever Ruthie and wherever Ruthie went, she carried some teeny thing in her pocket. So she likes teeny treasures from nature, both shells and flowers and hummingbird shells. And anytime she goes anywhere, she carries something teeny tiny. Her friend has a big book. Ruthie has a teeny tiny book. I like teeny tiny things too. One day at school recess, after jump rope and swings, Ruthie took a turn on the twirly bar. When she landed, she saw something in the grass. It was a little box with a teensy window and e an even tinier button on top. She couldn't believe her luck. It was a teeny tiny camera. You see it in the grass? Right here, Ruthie does. Ruthie looked through its little window. Then she pressed the button on top to take a picture. Click! Just like a real camera. This was absolutely the best thing Ruthie had ever found. And it was hers! Click! Click! She tried it every which way. Say cheese, clouds! Click! Say cheese, little bug! Click! Say cheese, school. Click. Say cheese, Martin. Click. But Martin didn't say cheese. Martin said, hey, that's my camera. So Ruthie was very excited. This camera really clicked. It made sounds. It was just like a real camera. She took pictures of the clouds. She took pictures of a bug. She took pictures of her school. And when she was trying to take a picture of her friend, he said, hey, that's my camera. Hmm. Rudy, Ruthie was startled. No, it's not. It's mine. Give it to me, said Martin. It's mine. It is not. Is too. No, it's not, shouted Ruthie, and she raced back to class. So Martin is pretty clear that that is his camera, and Ruthie doesn't even mention that she just found it. She says, it's mine. And when he says, no, it's not, she says, yes, it is. And then she ran away. And Martin is left behind. But that... That's my camera.
What's going on? asked Mrs. Olson. Ruthie's got my camera, cried Martin. I got it for my birthday and I dropped it on the playground. But Ruthie wanted that teeny tiny camera in the worst way. It's mine, she yelled. I got it for my birthday. Well, that wasn't true at all. Not one teeny tiny bit. Did she get this camera for her birthday? No. We all saw her find it, but Martin says he got it for his birthday. What do you think Miss Olson is going to do? Is it okay to tell a lie? What if you really want something? Mrs. Olson looked at Martin. She looked at Ruthie. Oh, goodness, this is a problem, she said. The camera can't belong to both of you. I'll keep it safe in my desk drawer for now. Let's talk about it again tomorrow. Ruthie's stomach flip-flopped all the rest of the day. She couldn't remember the answer to two plus two. When Miss Olson read a story, every word flew straight out the window. So Mrs. Olson probably has a pretty good idea of what's going on. But sometimes when you're angry, you can't really figure out the answer in the moment. So Miss Olson's doing the right thing. She's going to keep this camera till tomorrow. But in the meantime, Ruthie's not feeling so good. Sometimes that's what happens when you don't tell the truth. You get a little feeling in your tummy like you know that's not true. And sometimes... Sometimes you just telling a lie makes you have a bad feeling. Sometimes knowing that you're probably going to get caught makes it worse. And it's making her forget how to do things that she normally knows how to do, like answer math questions and love, uh, listen to stories, which she loves to do. It sounds like she can't even, all the answers are going right out that window. If you were Ruthie, what would you do? The bus ride home took forever. Hi, Ruthie, said Mama. How was school? Okay, mumbled Ruthie. So Ruthie thought she was never going to get home. And when she came in, Mama asked her how she was doing. Looks like she has a little snack ready for her. Ruthie just, mm, it was okay. And she kept on walking. This does not seem normal to Mama. Dinner was macaroni and cheese, Ruthie's favorite. But she couldn't eat, not one little bit. Aren't you feeling well? asked Papa. I'm not hungry, she said. At bedtime, Ruthie was close to tears. So. Mama and Papa are worried about Ruthie. She's not acting like herself. He's checking her temperature. Are you feeling okay? And by the time it was time to go to bed, Ruthie's parents, look they look really worried. And Ruthie, look at those little tears in her eyes. She's worked herself up. She's feeling a little sad and nervous. She knows that maybe what she did wasn't the right thing to do. Oh, and she's crying. What's the matter? Asked Mama. So Ruthie told Mama and Papa the whole story. What do you think went wrong? Asked Papa. I said it was my camera, cried Ruthie, but it's not. It's going to be okay, said Papa. You made a mistake, and tomorrow you can fix it. I think Mrs. Olson and Martin will understand. So Ruthie told Mama and Papa how she'd found that camera and that she said that it was hers, even though it was Martin said it was his, and that Miss Olson has it. Now she's worried about being in trouble. And Papa did Papa said what I would have said, that everybody makes mistakes. 
and if you try and do your best to make it right, that you're probably going to, someone might, maybe Martin and Miss Olsen will forgive you. But it's not easy to do. But the next morning, Ruthie could barely eat. Maybe Mrs. Olsen wouldn't understand. Maybe Ruthie would have to sit in the timeout corner. Maybe Martin would never talk to her again. Maybe no one would ever talk to her again. Not one teeny tiny word. The school bell was about to ring. Ruthie took a deep breath and began the long walk to the front of the room. Mrs. Olsen's desk seemed very far away. So even though Ruthie had some good advice that she was going to go to school and do the right thing, she was worried that maybe people were still going to be mad at her or that she was still going to be in trouble. And when she got to school, the walk from her desk up to Mrs. Olson's desk seems very far away. Do you think she's going to do it or do you think she's going to give up and, and, and just sit down? I hope she doesn't give up. Oh, she didn't give up. Good morning, Ruthie, said Mrs. Olson. I have something to tell you said Ruthie in a very small voice. The camera isn't mine. I didn't get it for my birthday. I found it on the playground. Wow, Ruthie, that was so very brave to tell the truth. Now we have to, do you think Mrs. Olson's going to say, I'm glad you told the truth, or how dare you, Ruthie, go to the timeout corner. Mrs. Olson didn't make her sit in the timeout corner. She didn't even look mad. Instead, she gave Ruthie a hug and kissed the top of her head. Thank you for telling the truth, said Mrs. Olson. That took a lot of courage. I'm sorry, Martin, said Ruthie. It's okay, said Martin. So you can see Ruthie looks a little surprised. Not only does she not get in trouble, but her teacher's giving her a big hug. And then she did what the next right thing, which is she said sorry to Martin and gave him back his camera. Martin's her friend. He said, it's okay. He just wanted his camera back. All at once, Ruthie's stomach stopped flip-flopping. She even skipped a little on the way back to her desk. She got the right answer to 3 plus 7 in math. And after lunch, Mrs. Olson read the funniest story Ruthie had ever heard. So when she's not worrying about a lie, she has a little skip in her step. She's doing, she's able to concentrate on her math. The story that Mrs. Olson's reading is the funniest thing ever. Look how, how everyone is laughing and having a great time. I wonder what Miss Olson is reading. I want to read that one. And on the short bus ride home, Ruthie realized she didn't miss the teeny tiny camera. Not one teeny tiny bit. The end. Look how happy and proud she is of herself. Not missing that teeny tiny camera. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed the... Uh, look at our backside. She's holding that camera, but it's the front and back of this book. I love it when books do that. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this story, please hit that thumbs up button. Oop. <laughs> please hit that thumbs up button at the bottom of the page. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. If you're not a subscriber yet, please click that subscribe button down at the bottom of the page. And don't forget to click the bell so that you're notified when there's new content. I hope to see you all again real soon. Bye-bye.